everybody, Jason Shepard of M0A.com um, with my buddy here, Chris Palmer. Now, Chris is someone that you guys are actually uh, quite familiar with. He was on my radio program back in one of the very first episodes, actually, and we talked quite extensively about what he does on FlyAOAMedia.com. We're going to talk about that a little bit more here in just a second. But Chris had a... Uh, interesting experience uh, doing some flying and uh, Chris why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself first and uh, just tell us a little bit about that flight we're gonna cut to the video footage here in a second as well alrighty so again uh, my name is Chris Palmer I own a company fly AOA media or angle of attack actually fly AOA media .com is my website but um, the particular instance that Jason is talking about is a short field takeoff that I was performing in the Pacific Northwest. And everything should have been normal, but as you'll see in the video, it actually turned out being a lot scarier than we wanted it to be. And for a number of reasons. So, you know, initially I wasn't going to share this video, but I decided that it had to be a learning experience so someone could actually. Um, you know, fly safer than what I experienced. And although at the time I did exactly what I knew to do, there were some other things that uh, pilots could certainly learn from it. Right. For sure. I mean, that is, at first of all, it took guts to put something like that out there because you worry about people saying stuff. But I mean, that's such a good learning point. I'm so thankful for you letting us share that with uh, my viewers and everything. So I really appreciate that. Go ahead no now. I mean, Run me through uh, what was happening. I mean, you're rolling down the runway. You're used to density altitude and stuff, though. So here in Florida, we don't deal with that quite, at least not to that extent, quite as much. I mean, you're in a bonanza. How many people are on board? And what's going through your mind when you're rolling down that runway? So typically where I fly, we deal with longer runways because of density altitude issues. This particular runway was 2,600 feet long, wow. and it had trees at the end, obviously. And <laughs> you know, in in private pilot, they teach you how to do short field and soft field takeoffs and landings. They teach you exactly how to do that. But um, you know, what I learned was that it's not always what the FAA says it is. Mm -hmm. And apart from that, you know, as a pilot in these types of circumstances you just got to keep your cool but um yeah so you know this wasn't a particular situation where the density altitude was high it was just a couple of us on board and per the faa short field takeoff requirements and how they say to do it i did it absolutely to the t right and it wasn't good <laughs> <laughs> well, let that be a not, lesson. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not that it wasn't good. I mean, the out you're you're talking to me today, so it couldn't have been that bad, you know. But I mean, do you, another thing too. Do you always film your flights, or is this just one you said, "Hey, I'm going to film this flight today"? I like to film them a lot. I have um, I have several videos that I've done that you know I like to just like you Jason I like to show people what I know and um, cuz you know it, it is a we are very blessed to be able to do what we do mm -hmm. especially when people from other countries see what we're able to do and uh, that that's something I like to share so this was another one of those, those circumstances that I just wanted to kind of show people but it ended up capturing something that was a little more interesting than yeah. most of the other flights that I've done yeah for sure <laughs> okay so let's let's wrap this up real quick I won't take any more of your time You've got, um, let's say, a listener or someone who's watching this right now is in the same situation. They were in a, say, maybe a 172, four people fully loaded with a, you know, 2200 foot strip out in front of them. What kind of suggestions do you have for that person? How do they know to make a go or no go decision? I mean, uh, put put them in your shoes, kind of thing. With everything, it starts with planning and. You've got to know the situation you're in. You've got to know what the aircraft is capable of, and you've got to know if it can actually handle that airstrip with the obstacle. In my particular case, everything checked out. This was supposed to be a non-event. We should have been able to go right over the trees, but you know something happened with the wind that totally took our margins away, mm -hmm. and it it ended up being a very scary situation where, you know, those basic basic pilot. 
uh, instincts or things that are taught to you, like airspeed. You know, I was going to go through the trees before I lost my airspeed. Right. And, um, you know, you've just got to be able to keep your cool in that situation. But it all starts with planning. And no, I guess another uh, another point would be that no set amount of planning is going to save you from situations like this. It's going to be, you know, your skills that and, you know, what you do that comes down to it. Now, if you watch the video again, you'll see that um, just intuitively I flew to the left of center line right. and went in between some trees. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even know I had done that until I replayed the video and just intuitively I saw that there was a place for me to get out and I went there. Just, you know, that was just the pilot instinct. Those are things you build up over time with experience. You can't necessarily teach all of those. But, um, you know, you've got to keep your cool. And I think one one of the biggest lessons I learned is that you've got to know your aircraft because there are a lot of things about the Bonanza in that situation that I didn't know about that are completely contradicting to the FAA procedures. Mm -hmm. And it could have made this a much more comfortable situation for me. Right, right. For sure. Well, awesome, Chris. Uh, thank you so much for taking your time to share that video with us. And guys, if you're more interested in checking out what Chris is doing, Chris, tell them a little bit about your website real quick, and then I'll, I'll send down the links below the video. So I have kind of a different uh, niche within flying. I actually teach people how to use Flight Simulator. And, you know, we, we teach a lot of people that um, weren't able to fly or are getting ready to fly with the use of flight simulator and it's a really great tool especially if you're looking to go into you know real world instrument flying it's a great place to learn how to get focused on scanning the instruments and stuff like that so that's kind of our specialty we're not into real training but um, we do the flight simulator thing it's a lot of fun awesome so if you guys are interested in learning more about Chris and what he's doing uh, there's some links down beneath this video you guys can check out and uh, Chris thank you so much for your time and, Thank uh, you. Guys, most importantly, hey, remember, a good pilot is always learning. Catch you guys later.